Okay, uh, about the structure of the teacher's course, right? So the teacher's course is divided in, in, in six credits, okay? We have two credits of literature, two credits of language, and two credits of didactics, okay? Uh, those credits can be, can be taken in, in the order the student needs, right? So I can start in didactics one and then go to, I don't know, uh, literature one, or, it doesn't matter, right? So they are as if we're talking about six independent courses, but uh, uh, one, of course, will complement the other in the whole, right? Uh, the credits don't need to be taken in, in, uh, in a period of time. So for example, if I take the first credit in one semester, I don't necessarily need to take the second credit in the second semester, right? I can take one credit in the one semester. I don't know, next semester I had a busy life and I can't. Then I don't know, I, I have uh, to travel to another country and I will live there for two years and I, don't, I won't have time to do the classes online, right? So yeah, I can, I can take one credit after two years, take one more credit. I can just, if I want, I'm not interested in didactics because I don't want to be a teacher. Just, I mean, I'm interested in the conversation. By the way, I focused a lot in this idea of the literature, but of course there will be lots of conversations, lots of presentations, lots of active parts uh, from the students. So let's imagine now I'm just interested in improving my English. I'm interested in talking the presentation thing. So I can take just, I don't know, the two literature credits and then that's it. I don't need to take the others. So it's not an entire course in that sense, but the six credits, uh, they make up one, one, one entire uh, course, right? So you can, you can um, face it as separate courses or you can face it as an entire course. Uh, all of the credits will, will have two parallel purposes, right? One is preparing the TC student as, uh, let's say, as a person. No, let me change this. Uh, preparing the TC student, focusing on the student. What do I mean by that? I will improve my ability in English. I will improve my uh, history knowledge because knowing language is knowing culture. I will improve my knowledge in grammar, linguistics, phonetics, phonology. I will improve, uh, you know, my English and all, and then understand here in English, a very broad sense of the word, right? English, we're talking about culture, even philosophy, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about all of that. So uh, I will, uh, that's the first focus, all right? The second focus will be the TC, the TC student as a teacher. So for example, in the credit of literature, of course, we're going to improve your abilities a lot, but also we're going to teach you how to be a conversation teacher, because this is the level if you want to, to teach literature. So there will be presentations where we're going to teach the other students or uh, depending on the class, uh, you will have the opportunity to teach one of our groups, you know, but of course, we're talking about advanced and high advanced groups. You'll be able to conduct a conversation, to conduct a debate, to make students participate, things like that, all right? So this will be the second focus, that is focusing on your ability of being a teacher. Let's let's get, for example, the language credits, right? On On the one hand, we are going to focus on your syntax, a little bit of linguistics. So as I told you, phon uh, phonetics, phonology, a little bit of syntax, semantics, things like that. But of, of course, always keep in mind that whatever is necessary for a class, uh, understand this, whatever is necessary for a class is not whatever you're going to use in class, okay? Whatever is practical in life, whatever will be real, not, you know, because sometimes mainly in university, you go very far, you study about, you know, the, the uh, I don't know, the, the differences between the theories of language acquisition and et cetera, and et cetera, but 
You don't want to know that. You want to know the best uh, strategy to teach, all right? Or for example, the, uh, I don't know, discussions like uh, if grammar is something innate in our brain or if grammar is something we get in by society, you know, by uh, behavior. Uh, that, of course, that's an interesting question, but uh, as an English speaker, I don't want to know if my syntax is created or it comes from heaven. I don't know. I just want to have a, a much better syntax, right? So remember, even when we focus on the student, on the development of the student, we are always thinking about knowledge that can be used, you know? Knowledge that is going just to feed knowledge, don't, don't get me wrong, knowledge per knowledge sakes is great. But you know, that kind of knowledge that is just supposed to have the, the, the fight, you know, uh, academic fight, right? Uh, let, uh, maybe if I talk about philosophy, it will be better, right? So I will study uh, Descartes, I will study, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know, Heidegger, I will study Thomas Aquinas, and then I will discover in what ways they differ, blah, 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 blah. You know, if it's just for that, just for producing a discussion, uh, of course, there are, there are people whose jobs is to do this, right? But this is not our purpose. Our purpose, if we were studying philosophy, would be, okay, but which is the best philosophy? What philosophy can I under, can I learn so I can guide my life, you know? Get that idea. That's the idea we are going to have for linguistics, for example, right? Oh well, so you are going to we're going to focus on the TC student. You are going to have better abilities in those areas. And then we're also going to focus on the TC student as a possible teacher. So we're going to teach you how to um, uh, create a grammar class, how to help students. For example, if a student doesn't understand verb to be, or there is, there are in opposition to have, you know, students always confuse that. I have many people here, right? How can you teach them? How can you make them practice? How can you show them in a way that is not too technical? Or how can you have a more technical tool if your student is more, you know, uh, mainly older people or people who are more theoretical, you know? So uh, again, we're focusing on, on both cases, right? Uh, even in didactics credits, we're going to have those double uh, double focuses, right? For example, didactic. First, focusing on you as a person, right? Uh, what kind of uh, materials can you use? What kind of methodology can you use? How can you adapt your class? How can you, you know, all of those practical things. Focusing on the student, all, again, always practical, right? So for example, um, I don't know if a student talks too much, but but it's very uh, he's very smart. What should I do? You know, what should I do if I have a big group, a small group, a talkative group, uh, and etc. and etc. Right. So that's important. One more thing about the general structure of the classes. Keep in mind that in the end, if you finish all the TC course, you are going to have. Uh, uh, 171 hours of course, you know, because each credit is 20, 28 hours and a half. And that's pretty a lot, you know. Uh, nowadays, courses out there are usually like this. You either have the university course, you know, and university course tends to be very, very, very theoretical. Let me give you just one very, <laughs> very fun fact, a very fun fact for you. If you study uh, letters, you know, in Federal here in uh, Paraná, you will have two main areas you can go into, two or four, if I'm not wrong. Yes, four areas. You can study pedagogy, so you're going to be a teacher. You're going to have the diploma there, so you can work at Bom Jesus, for example, positive uh, public schoolings and things like that. You, you, so this is one path. The other path, you are going to be a linguist, and then you're going to study a lots of things related to science, you know, it's the scientific part of the language. Third option, you are going to study, you're going to be a literature major. You're going to study literature. Uh, fourth option, you're going to be a, a translation major. 
And a fun fact is, you are going to spend your whole major, you know, and you will never translate, never. You, you can translate, you can take translation courses, but you know, those are the extra courses. The, the, the core curriculum, the curriculum you have to take, if you're studying translation, you, you never translate, translate, never, never, never. <laughs> and then uh, people usually ask, okay, but so what do you study? You study about the problems of translation, you know, about what kind of philosophical questions you have when you have to translate and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you become a, 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 a theoretical specialist in translation, not a translator, okay? And I'm telling you this because I think it reflects very well what happens uh, with uh, the other areas as well, all right? So for example, if I major in, uh, in, in any, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about the humanities, right? Uh, uh, the, the areas I have had contact with, you know, so of course uh, letters, but also mm, uh, philosophy, I've taken some courses there, you know, th those areas. But the idea is uh, from, I think from, I don't know, I think I, I stayed in Federal for four years, four years and a half. I think 10% of what I learned there, I could apply in class as an English teacher, you know? So going back, going back, you have something very, very, very broad, you know? And I'm not saying the other areas are not fine. They're very fine, right? But that's not the point here. The point is you have very, very broad formation and then you get a diploma and then it tends to be far from your real activity even reading, even literature, uh, it tends to be far from real literature. I'll, I'll, we'll talk about what real literature is in a moment. Uh, so you either have that or you have, for example, in many English schools, you have like uh, much more practical courses, just like the course we are, we are intending to do here, but uh, they are like 10 hours, you know? It's like, oh, 10 hour course to learn the technique so I can teach at this school, right? So why am I telling you this? Because remember I told you that diploma won't get, won't get you very far, right? Diploma, at least in this world of English schools. Uh, but the same way, you know, a university major, or I would say as an, as an uh, personally, as an interview, interviewer, even more, when I see a person has taken a, uh, um, oh, let me finish my sentence uh, before. Uh, the same way, or even more, uh, university diploma catches the interviewer attention, you know, uh, the, 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 the diploma from a, a, a big course, you know, a heavy course, like this one will, will call their attentions, right? Uh, well, and then, uh, Continuing what I was saying before, uh, when I see a person has taken, I don't know, a hundred hours, you know, of a practical course on teaching, I prefer by far that person than any person who has a major, master's, even doctor's degree. All right, and that's uh, and I think most interviewers will agree with me because then you have that guy who is a specialist in the theories of uh, language acquisition and his. PhD was on the acquisition of a language of South Korean or elderly people in the North District of China. I don't know. A very, very specific research, but you don't want very specific research. You have real students. You need people with hands-on experience, right? So I think that's, that makes a, a big difference as well. Well, I'm going to uh, stop this video, start another one, and then we're talking about and literature, going back to literature.